Welcome to today's 3D print. I'm going to try something new today. I need something more hands-free and wireless, so I'm using my E-Action camera. 70 bucks on Amazon. Very good price, and it does time-lapse wonderfully. I have a toy waiting for me when I go back from there. Someone from GearVest contacted me and said, would I like to review stuff from them? And I only had two questions. Does it cost me anything? Because I got no money. <laughs> he said, no. We will send it to you for free. You put video reviews and links back to the product. And I was like, can I be honest and say what I want? As long as it's the truth. And they said, yes. So I was like, yes, send me free stuff to review. <laughs> um, I can't say they didn't pay me anything because they did. They sent me this for free. And as far as I'm concerned, that's no different than sending cash. So I was paid for this. But I was paid via the reception of the product, the receipt of the product, and I am going to review it. So, what is in this yummy, delicious box? I wasn't expecting it for a month, but apparently they send stuff faster to people who are going to review it, which kind of makes sense. You want to get it into the hands of people. Um, I'm a little late, of course, uh, but I just got back from Naram last night, and this was waiting for me when I got back. And it is... I've cut it open to make sure of what it was, but I haven't actually looked inside yet. It's the Anet E10. A lot of people are saying, is this the CR10 killer? That's clickbait and hyperbole. It's not, besides a vague visual representation, it is absolutely positively nothing like the CR10, except that it kind of, sort of, similar looks maybe slightly like CR10. So you can see here, came with two little samples of filament, which I probably won't even use. Um, looks like a build tack like surface. Once I can get a, the proper piece of glass, I'll switch to print and Z. But you can see it, uh, they kind of they put those little rubber things in there, so it kind of sort of looks like a CR10. It's not, not even close to a CR10. If you want a CR10, get a CR10. But this is only 300 bucks. And it's got a pretty large build volume 220 by 270 by 300 millimeters, which is actually really big. That's actually surprisingly big. So it'll be interesting. So, is it Chingrish or English? Extruder and high end 3D print. Actually, it looks like reasonably decent English. Picture one is a chassis, two is the vertical frame. Align and screw to the verticals. It's got similar T brackets. So, it kind of builds like a CR10. A similar structure. You're going to have a a pre-built base, and a pre-built gantry, and you'll screw the two together with brackets, a separate brain box. The brain box holds the spool and the memory card and whatnot. Uh, the instructions aren't bad. They're not great, but they're not bad. A reasonably intelligent person will be able to follow these instructions without too much trouble, and most of the build should be pretty obvious. I understand it uses um, 2040 slot instead of um, V-Rail. And I understand they do use the correct wheels, just it's not as high quality. But it's a $300 printer, not a $500 printer or a $600 printer. So it's almost half what a CR10 costs if you buy it from the US. So it will be interesting. It is reasonably packed well. Let me make sure you can see what's in here. Yes, you can. zip tied together so it doesn't move around. I am not a fan of the base. Can you see that? Yes you can. Instead of being a solid Y carriage plate, it is not only is it an H, but it's three pieces attached together. That screams warp and flex, but it's got decent rails, standard bearings. But the heat plate is thick. It's actually very thick that might actually be pretty flat. In fact, it looks very flat. That is pretty flat. So, they got a crap Y carriage plate, but they compensated for that with a very thick PCB heat bed aluminum plate. So, that might be enough. I, I think that would be strong enough. I do not see any warping in that. And it was, I put a straight edge on there, and as a tiny little bowing in the center, very, very little. Less than a millimeter. Um, so that shouldn't be too bad. 
I'll probably get rid of these little inserts, just tear them out. Looks like they pre-install the, um, the T-brackets. I see, they're only using one screw through the slot rail here. You see that? There's only one hole through the rail here. And so this is also for helping with alignment. So you'll turn these sideways, slide your gantry on top of that, and then crank them tight. Um, being a smaller gantry, it's probably good enough. It's got some nice feet. I do like the feet. Interesting. Oh, it's adjustable. It's not, oh, it's thumb not adjustable. Now, isn't that nice? That's pretty cool. It's got this little angle bracket here. You, you see this okay? Yep. And they're, they use wing nuts. And this, this wing nut pulls the shaft, which slides along here, for tensioning this belt. So the belt is has built-in tensioning. That's pretty darn cool, actually. It's got super tiny little dumb adjustment wheels, but they are knurled. That's actually not bad. My issue with those is the fact that I have gigantic fingers, <laughs> so I tend to prefer big ones, but there is room here to be able to print and install larger ones, I believe. Not much, though, because that gantry probably comes to here, so you might not be able to 3D print larger um, leveling knobs, and these, this does tend to want to bounce around a little bit, but not bad like any other printer. I do like that it's recessed in the bed here, so the glass can sit flat on top of the aluminum once I put a piece of glass on here. Not bad. I mean, it's it's not CR10 quality, but it certainly is not bad. Not bad for a $300 printer. And it's all metal. Is that metal? I can't tell if that's metal or not. Yeah, that is metal. Okay. It's coated. It looks like the retention blocks at the end for the linear rails. It looks like those are um, 3D printed. But all the plates for the steppers and the tensioning and the T brackets on the side, they are all steel. So it should be reasonably stiff. I can already see that this Y carriage is bent. The plate is flat, but the Y carriage itself, uh, you can probably see that in here. There's a slight bend right here in the H. It's not bad, probably won't cause a problem, but that's one of the reasons why I'd prefer a solid plate. So if I end up liking this printer, I might, down the road, replace the wide carriage plate with something unibody, something one piece. But uh, with only a 220 by um, 270 print bed, I probably won't need to. I think this will work just fine. Let's go to the next piece. But so far, I'm impressed. It's not great. I wasn't expecting great, but it's not junk, and that is important, especially for a cheap printer. These cheaper printers are getting better and better every year. A couple of years ago, a $300 printer would have bought you something that needs a lot of work, and nowadays, a $300 printer gets you something usable. That's pretty darn cool. Little box, Allen keys, PTFE Bowden tube, spare, Oh, I like the CR10, and I like that the printer manufacturers are starting to do this. You get a spare hot end. So this is another nozzle, heat block, and, um, um, what do you call that? Heat brake tube. And spare bolts. Well, probably some of these bolts are needed, and some of them are spare. Zip ties for cable management. Actually, a pretty decent little screwdriver. Two-sided for Phillips and straight. It's actually pretty nice. I like that. I'll show you that more later. One of those crap USB cables, although it's a standard full-size A, so it'll probably be fine. And your SD card reader with SD card. That's nice. Well, I really wish these guys would switch to full-size SD cards, because I really hate the micro flash cards. The, the micro SD cards are a pain in the butt. And that's a cable. Looks halfway decent. Yeah, it doesn't look too bad. It's got decent stiffness, it's flexible. The contacts inside look pretty good, so it's not like a total garbage cable, it's not bad. A lot of times you get some really sketchy cables with these things, but that looks pretty good. I like the scraper, it's very, very, very thick. I actually like this a lot. It needs to be sharpened, even though it has a beveled edge. It's not bad, but it needs to be sharpened more. 
but you're also going to want to get rid of these points because you'll tear that fake build tag apart with that point. You'll shred it. So watch my other video. I'll do the same thing to this one. Get yourself a sharpening stone, round off these corners, bevel them up, sharpen the edge, and you're good to go. Let's see. Ah, like the CR-10, it has the little blower fan attached to the side. And where does it exit? Oh, they have a pretty, it's 3D printed, but a pretty nice little blower motor attachment here. Let me give you a closer look at that. That's actually pretty nice. Two slits here, directs the air out. Here is your thermistor and your heater cartridge, which will go into your hot end, your hot end cooling fan, your parts cooling fan, the little cage like the CR-10. So they modeled this after the CR-10. They said, let's make a cheaper, simpler CR-10. It's not not the caliber of a CR-10, but it's clearly it was clearly um, modeled after one. Huh. 3D printed spool holder. Okay, works. Threads work. Spool looks strong. There you go. The actual spool holder arm tower. Alrighty, next up, that is a separate part. Yes, it is. That is actually pretty cool. The control box can um, completely separate one end. With the CR-10, some of the parts stay on the printer and some of the parts stay on the control box. With this one, the entire control box can be separated, which I do like. I mean, it's not bad. It's got an actual plug switch. It probably is fused. It says it's fused, so there probably is a fuse in there. It probably works exactly like the other one, although this one does not have a bottle cooling fan like a CR-10. I'm guessing it, it just draws air in from the sides and you have an exhaust in the back. That is where your spool holder attaches. Standard, reset, push, twist, LCD screen. That's always fun. That's your standard arrangement. I do not see a way of switching it. It's got a hole. Oh, there it is. It is in there. And it is set for 220. I think. So I switch it to 110 volts. Don't forget to do that. Thankfully, they leave it at 220 because plugging a 220 into a 110 isn't dangerous. It's when you plug a 110 into a 220 that is dangerous. So by defaulting it to 220, the worst that can happen is it doesn't work. So that's always good that they default it to. Did that move back? No. Okay, I see. It's always good that they defaulted to 220. Rubber feet built in, that's nice. I'm going to guess that the power brick is attached to these four screws here and that these five are, will bring the bottom off. Looks like the main board is attached to the top. We'll open that in a future video. The last piece. I'm guessing it's the last piece. It is the gantry. Anything else in there? Nope. Box is empty. See you later, box. Now we have a little more room. So here is our hot end. You see it is slot rail, not V slot, it's standard slot. Let me get you a little closer here. to see me right now so here is your stepper motor uh, not the greatest attachment to the main body but it is steel it is this one steel plate here and how does that attach looks like it's a pass-through I would probably want to bracket this because I can move that it's not a big deal but I would rather that be pretty firmly attached so I will probably bracket this thing to prevent that from making any movement. Not bad though, I bet you it'll work just fine. You have the, it looks like the correct wheels inside of these slots. It's like donut wheels. It uses dual Z motors. Which is probably good since this won't be as stiff as the CR-10. So the dual Z motors is probably a smart idea. I am seeing all steel parts except for again the lead screw end blocks are 3d printed but that's okay all they're there is to hold in place they don't they don't they're not under load so that's okay for them to be printed 
but everything else is metal. The entire extruder, including a guide for the filament? That's it's either a, I don't think it's a guide for the filament. I think that's for cable management. I think that takes care of the cable that runs to the hot end, the Bowden style hot end. I'm guessing at all this. I haven't read the instructions yet. Standard arrangement. You're pushing for your Bowden, your um, um, idler arm, your two gears. Looks like a pretty nice little gear in there. Nice hot gear. Looks pretty sharp. It's got pretty nice edges. Brass threading for your lead screws. The lead screws look pretty nice. I don't see any bend or warping. This really doesn't look too bad. The belts have something to be desired. They look like they're just rubber belts. But I bet you they work just fine. Stepper motor. The X-axis stepper motor is very securely attached. The extruder stepper motor is very securely attached. The reality is the Z motors are not under a lot of stress. So their attachment is probably perfectly adequate. While I plan to reinforce it, that's only from my own peace of mind. I have a feeling that functionally they are perfectly fine. Let's double check the attachment on the Y-axis stepper motor. It is also attached firmly. Four screws, full size, full surround plate. It does not move or wiggle at all. No play whatsoever. So they have the strength where they need the strength and that's a good thing that's what you do when you make a cheap printer you make it as strong as you need to make it where you need to make it and you cut corners elsewhere where strength is not as important so I give them kudos for that that looks well designed that's your limit switch there it is zip tied so it doesn't move around during shipment now this is interesting the heat bed attachment here can you see that yep so here's where your heat bed attaches. So it has its own built-in strain leaf, basically. It's the plug. The plug can come undone without damaging the connections on the heat bed. So that's actually an improvement. That's good. I like the very large feet. I do wish the gantry was two screw with 2040, like the CR-10 is. But I suspect that this doesn't really need that much strength there. So I think it would be overkill, and it would violate that primary rule of go cheap where you can. I'm guessing this whole assembly is going to slide right over top of these. Mm -hmm. Yep, just like that. Hmm, I have this backwards. That is not sitting properly. Unless this goes in the... Nope, that is definitely the back. And this is definitely the front. Um, uh, yeah, that is the front. But it is hitting... Oh, it's too low. Duh. <laughs> The z-axis was too low, so it was sitting on top of the switch. Perfect. Okay. So now in the actual plate here, I'll turn this. See, actually, I can turn this since it's already pretty much assembled. Okay. This plate here is what actually contacts the switch. So good, solid contact. You shouldn't have any problems with that. This limit switch here is contacted by... Unsure can't be the wheel. Ah, the edge of this plate here folds under, and that contacts this limit switch. This plate here contacts this limit switch, and in the back, actually, it's the front, nope, it's in the back. Okay, it looks like the bearing block contacts this limit switch back here. So, pretty darn cool. Uh, like the CR-10, the assembly is ridiculously easy. You slide these in, put the screws in, tighten up the T-bolts, your main assembly is done. You set your Bowden tube in place, run the wires, insert all of your stuff, and you're good to go. I do understand why, reality, and hit top and whatnot, I do understand now why they made some of this plug into the brain box instead of having everything 
from the rain box to the printer. Can you see that? Yes. The reason they did that is that allowed them to pre-assemble the hot end. Because everything here is going from brain box to the printer instead of the CR10 where some of it is permanently attached to the printer and some of it's permanently attached to the brain box is because this method, although it allows you to make two separate parts, means you have to install the heater cartridge and the thermistor, which means you got to do it right. But it's not a big deal. Anybody buying one of these printers should have some very basic fundamental DIY skills, so that should not be a problem. Looks like 40 millimeter fan inside. Looks like the same fan is on the CR10, maybe smaller, maybe slightly smaller parts cooling fan than the CR10. No idea what fans are in here yet. It looks like a similar hot end to the CR10. Let me see if you can see this. Can you see that? Yes. So you can see here you have a heater block attached to this this plate here. Uh, a lot of people said they don't like that, but I actually do like that. The air is going to blow through these fans and blow over this plate. And this plate acts as a heat sink. To me, that's a good thing. That, that gives this more metal to keep this part cool, which is what you want. So that's not necessarily a bad thing. Here is the hot end for the CR10. And you can see the similarity. Actually, it's damn near identical. The CR10 one is slightly larger. If you can see that there. Um, heat block is virtually identical. And the nozzle looks smaller. It's actually using a smaller nozzle. Not smaller diameter, but the, the physical nozzle itself is actually smaller. Let me actually let me tilt it up so you can see it. You can see that there. This dramatic difference in nozzle size. The CR10 nozzle is about three times the size of the nozzle on the... Um, I'm sorry. The nozzle on the E10 is about three times the size of the nozzle on the CR10. I have no idea whether that's good or bad. I don't think it matters. They're both brass. So the CR10 has a bigger heat sink by a couple millimeters and also a much larger um, nozzle. Otherwise, the heat break looks the same, although there's a bigger gap here. And the, um, the heat block itself looks the same. I am going to screw this together off camera and I'll get back to you guys. Figured I'd jump back in here and show you some of this. This is actually an improvement I really like to see from Chinese manufacturers, and I hope they all continue to do this. Well packaged, well separated, and segregated components. Zip ties for cable management. Your very nice scraper, wooden handle scraper. Um, it does not come with an extra Bowden tube, it only comes with one for the printer here. Although I wonder, can I cut this in half? Probably not. Nope, it's one. Um, put the spool holder together, went together fine, no problem. Here is your Allen keys that it comes with, and then here is the bag of parts. And what's cool is that these are the parts you need for assembly, and it actually tells you what's in here. M6 by 22 pieces, those are going to be for your gantry. M4 by 10 two pieces, I'm going to guess that those are um, for the spool holder. And then you have M3 by 5 two pieces, which would be to hold your fan cover on top of your extruder assembly. And then these other ones are spare parts, and it actually says on the bag, spare parts. Fantastic. More of them need to do that. What I would like to see is for them to say, spare parts ANET E10. So I can toss this in the drawer and know that these are spare parts for my ANET E10. And I will make that change. I'm going to take a Sharpie and put it on there, what that is. And then same thing here. I mean, it's obvious what it is, but again, put ANET E10 on there. That'd be nice to see one little improvement they can make, but fantastic that they actually mark these as spare parts, mark these with exactly what they are, so it's very clear what you have, what you're supposed to have, and what they are for, so I, don't, I know I can put these aside as spare parts. No name, 8 gig SD card, it just says 8 gig on it, and your no name micro SD reader, USB reader for the computer. I will get back to you when I finish screwing this together. It is like the CR10, six screws and you're done. Alrighty, here you can see inside here, this is what I was talking about. This is your H plate. It is actually one thin plate going across the middle, two nuts holding the ends of the belt. Right. Three screws go into these H plates. Each of them has four screws going into your bearing blocks underneath. 
Now on my particular printer, this must have gotten squished at the factory because the box was perfect so it wasn't damaged from shipping. Um, these are your screws where your bed hardware goes through. So here's your leveling nuts, your screws, and your springs. These are not the nice flat springs that you see on a CR-10, but again, this is a cheaper alternative to the CR-10. It gives you a larger than normal print volume without paying the $500 premium price of the CR-10. Um, I'll probably tighten this belt up a little bit. That's a little looser than I would like. No big deal. It has a built-in adjustment. Which is very nice. Uh, might as well play with that while I got you guys here. Not that one. It is this one. Now I can tighten this up. There it goes. A little too tight. Nice. Hear that? Perfect. Retighten this up. The wing nut on the bottom helps. You can actually do this all without a tool. The wing nuts will do the same thing. That's nice and tight. See now it moves. What's happening is the leveling knob sits below here like this and it was running into the socket for the stepper drop motor for the z-axis. That means the tolerances are pretty tight. And because this is bent a little bit, let me see if I can show you that. Oh yeah, you can see that. So this here is bent down. I gotta bend it back up. Shouldn't be a big deal. I should be able to just take a pair of pliers and bend it back up. So I will talk to you guys once I finish that. And there you go. I didn't even need tools. I just put my hand underneath it like this two fingers underneath, put my hand on top of the screws, and just gave it a little tug up until it was bent back in place, and now they're straight, so they won't hit the leveling knobs anymore. I guess I can leave the video running while I put this back together. So, screw, spring, Hole and printer. Might be easier to screw in from the top with the Yep, definitely easier. So, place the spring, drop in the screw. Position your leveling nut. And use the screw. go. That is much easier. Again, place the spring, insert the screw, get the screw in the hole, hard to do when you can't look at what you're doing. Just better turn it around. Ah, yeah, no one near it. There we go. Again, push it down. Now be careful you don't re-bend your plate when you do this, since that would be a pretty nasty consequence. So don't jam down on this hard. Don't push down on this and bend that again.
People whine, ah, oh, you should have sent it back. Yeah, I'm going to send it back to China, sure. <gasps> when I can fix it in 30 seconds myself. You're supposed to be playing with a 3D printer. You're building stuff. You're making stuff. Shut up and fix it. <laughs> All right. If I bought a G-Max for $3,000 and something was wrong, you bet your ass they'd be fixing it. But when you're getting a $300 printer, just fix it. There we go. And no more contact. The bed now moves full travel without bumping into the stepper motor drivers or sockets. What I would like to see is for them to space that out a little more. You know, either make this a little taller, you could it wouldn't take much effort to make that just a little bit bigger so that um there'd be no contact even if that was a little bent. Or just use a better wide carriage plate. But otherwise it's fine. I think I made that a little too tight. Yeah. Yeah, it's a little better. Good. That is nice. I love this double um, wing nut adjustment. It's very nice. Wish more printers would do that. And that's a thick enough plate that it shouldn't bend. Very nice. Now comes wiring it up. That will come in a moment. Actually, it just consumes space on YouTube, so why not? Why not let you guys watch the entire process unfold? Alrighty. I uh, can't see both me and that, so see you later. There we go. Uh, I'm looking at the back of the printer. I've pushed this all forward so I can get access to all the connections. Here is your end stop, steppers, heat bed, stepper, stepper, and there should be another end stop here. Yep, right there. So there's the connections right there. It's on the other side of the video. Um, I guess I should turn it this way so you guys can see it. It looks like the control box would be pretty ambidextrous, so you can put it on either side, I would imagine. Let's check it out. Actually, it probably will be better on this side. And everything is clearly marked. This has a label that says extruder. These things are pretty obvious. They're actually already bundled together and already pre-bent. So it looks like they will insert right into place and you'll tighten the screws down. I'll let you know if that actually happens. Well, you're going to watch me do it. That says heat bed, so it's obvious what that does. And these are correctly marked. Z-axis limit switch and left Z-axis motor. So clearly this is the left. Now this is my right, but if you were to turn the printer around, this is the left. So that is correctly marked. Let's unsnip this. So this is going to be your hot end. Let's get this all unraveled so they are not wrapping around each other. That is going to go to your hot end. So you're going to stick it up inside the gantry like that, out of the way. Now, the extruder needs to be separate. So this is your heat bed. That's going to be the bottommost connection. So I'm going to plug that in first. Oop, upside down. There we go. There we go. So that doesn't interfere with anything. Okay. Just unraveling these. Y axis. That is going to be this one here. So let's run that underneath since it does not need to be above. We will take care of that in a moment. Okay. Next up is Z axis left. That is going to be here. So that can also go underneath. Okay. Okay, so here is our Z-axis stepper motor connection. They are unidirectional, so as long as you don't force it, they only fit one way. Now let's consult the book of knowledge. 
for how to connect the switches. One, two, slide, insert, build and assemble. Okay. X axis. Z axis. Okay. It looks like it is the two connections closest to the hinge. There are three connections on the limit switch. So I need to know which two to use. And you are going to use the one closest to the pivot and the one next to that. It's a limit switch, so polarity should not matter. Although they have red wire at the hinge, so that's what I'm going to do. Required or not. Red at the hinge. Slide the protective tubing in place. Black next to red. It's not easy to access that, but it is doable. There we go. Protective tubing in place. Alrighty. Now, the way these work, let me show you one. So, there are these tubes over the wires. You can slide it through, connect it, and then push it in place for protection. That's all there is to it. Alrighty, extruder and Y. This one is one of your most important. You want this one on top of everything else because this one needs to go to your extruder and Y axis, which means it needs to raise with it. And unlike the CR10, they have tons of excess here. This goes way higher than the, it actually needs to go. So there's plenty of excess here. You don't have to worry about running out of cable like you do on the CR-10. I wouldn't necessarily fault the CR-10 with that, so much as say that ANET copied the CR-10 and said, hey, we can fix that. <laughs> so they kind of cheated. They got to go second. And when you go second, you can always make those tiny improvements. Alrighty. Let's see, do I want to go over or under that? I think I will go under. Connects to that one. And limit switch should be on the front here. Yes, it is. So this wire will come around here. And once again, red for the one closest to the hinge. I doubt it matters, but that's the way they show it in the instructions, so that's the way I'm going to do it. These are pretty tight, and they bump into these screws here. So I'm actually going to bend that contact up a little bit to clear the screw. Since I cannot slide it on, small defect in design there. So bend that tab up a little bit, and now I can connect the limit switch. Slide the protectors in place. go. Slide the shielding in place. There we go. Now, I don't know if you noticed me doing that. Um, can you see this? Okay. This is the limit switch right here. And there are two plugs that you have to plug into. The hinge is down here. Let me double check that. That is correct. Red on the bottom, black on number two, away from the bottom, number one. This limit switch prong, electrical connection, was touching this bolt that holds the one of the guide wheels onto the Z-axis riser, which is the X gantry, the X-axis. I could not slide it on, so I put the screwdriver in between the prong and the screw and bent it up a little bit, giving me clearance to add that. It won't hurt nothing. That's something else they should fix. Uh, 
that's it. These are all clearly marked. X-axis limit switch, X-axis, extruder motor, all very clearly marked in English with the correct words. This is Y-axis. I believe it would be easier to tip this up and do this. Yep. Mm. This is actually in the back. And then our limit switch is right here. Okay, so this is all accessible from the back. That's nice. Okay. And the switch connection one. Limit switch connection two. Slide the protection in place. And we are almost done. Okay. So this one goes above. Ooh, I don't like that. I'm going to undo that. Because I do not want this. It should be easier to undo that. I do not want these passing through each other. There we go. You need to be careful with the y-axis or x-axis i'm sorry and you need to be careful with the heat bed because those two move this needs to move back and forth so you want to make sure there's nothing to get in the way this and this need to rise up with the entire gantry so you want to make sure that they are free and clear on top that all the rest of the wires are below them otherwise they might snag and resist and that would be bad okay that's your limit switch there your heat bed is free and clear to not interfere. This should be the other z-axis. Yes. So I want to make sure that I come through away from all these wires and go underneath. And come up in here. There we go. Now they are underneath where they won't be in the way. So your two z-axis push underneath the printer then do your y-axis, then do your heat bed so it sits on top of all of this and doesn't snag on anything, and then your extruder assembly and stepper motors on top of everything else so they don't interfere. And make sure that these two are separated left and right because this one, this cable here, needs to go back and forth when it's printing. It'd be easier if I show you this way. This needs to go back and forth, so you want to make sure this cable doesn't interfere with this cable. This cable just needs to rise, so it just needs to make sure it's not going to pick anything up and cause you a problem. Alright, let's turn this booger around. Okay. Alrighty. Now there is another zip tie holding the gantry in place here. The assembly. I do wish they would have included a pair of snippers. They included everything else. They should have included snippers because these things have lost nothing. Do I have the other pair here? Uh, yeah, it's over there. But um, including a pair of these would have cost them like literally nothing. And they are so handy. Okay. So. Blower. There's the two screw attachment points right there, which means this goes where? Consult the book of knowledge. That's not looking right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, it looks like it does go in through the right. And there is a set screw in there. I will probably need the smallest one. Uh, is there no such screw in there? Ew, I am missing a part. Or am I? Huh, I am missing a set screw. Do I have a spare? No. Oh, 
Alrighty, it looks like the set screw for the heater cartridge fell out during shipment, but the spare heater cartridge does have the set screw in there. So, I will simply take it. And then get myself a replacement for my backup. That was correct, it is the smallest one. Another good reason to include spares, which I applaud them for. Although this set screw should not have been installed, since a part like that, it's inevitable it would fall out without being secured. Okay. Now, how is this going to go in? Oh, it's that simple, huh? It is that simple. It just sits like this. I don't know if you can. Let's make sure you can see this. Okay. So this goes on like this. As you see, that just sits where it needs to sit. Although it looks like I am missing an additional screw. I can use one of the spares for that. All right. It uses the same screw that holds the component down on the bed, so it uses an M35, so I should be able to, hmm, no, that's going to be tricky, because you don't want to pinch that wrong, so it looks like the screw that should be in here is not in either part. They don't even show it in the picture. Okay. So. Oh, wait a minute. No way. No, that's definitely a set screw. But that will work. Interesting. Okay. So the M35 will work for both. So you can use the extra M35s. I thought they were for this. I guess not. Okay. So I also need them for this. Do I have any extras in here? Negative? Oh, wait a minute. There's a nice flat one. Let's dig into our spare parts. Do we have any teeny tiny ones? No, that will not fit. But that might fit here. Nope. Too big. Okay. I only have two of these, and I need at least one to attach the face on the printer. So I'm going to use one to install the heater block and thermistor. There we go. This is not the correct component. I actually need to get myself a nice soft little washer to hold that thermistor in place that is not going to sit properly. And you tighten the set screw to hold the heater cartridge in place. And now the heater cartridge doesn't move. There we go. And this sits right on top of the entire assembly like so. I will use my remaining M35 to secure that in place. noise when I print because that's going to jiggle but there's nothing I can do about it I can tighten it but that's only going to help so much 
So I'll need to order myself an extra M35. So on my printer, can't do that. Don't lean on the bed. Um, you see here, there is a set screw in here that holds the heater cartridge in place. Mine was missing, so I had to take the one from the spare. But you also need a second screw, and this is a little more important. The, the heater cartridge goes in here, and the thermistor goes in here. And then there should be a, a screw with a flat pan head and probably a soft washer to hold that thermistor in place. I Sorry about that. Battery died. I had to go out and get a charger. Anyway, um, this one was missing the set screw for the heater cartridge, which I was able to take from the spare parts, but neither the printer nor the... Let me check this side. Okay. Nope. Neither the print head on the printer or the spare had this screw here, which is an M35, but it needs to be a pan head. It needs to have that lip to hold the thermistor in place. So I used one of the screws to hold the housing in place to do that job for now until I get another one. So just something to be aware of when you build a printer. Make sure those are actually there. For the manufacturer of the printer, I would suggest either... Um, I think the best thing to do would be to include those parts in the bag with the spare hot end. Include the two screws and the two extra screws in this bag since those are going to be prone to falling out and that appears to be exactly what happened. I will check the box to see if they're in the box but those parts are small enough that who knows if I'd ever actually find them. So let's put the spare parts back in the spare parts bag. And I would suggest including a couple of grub screws and those hold down screws in the spare parts bag as well since those are going to be very easy to lose screws when people are messing with their printer and those are also going to be hard to replace if you do not have the um, part available I don't know where the bag is for that I'll probably use that bag alrighty now Bowden tube this we'll go back here yes that does look like that is attachment for the wire management very nice I like that okay that pops in there actually looks like I could make two out of this I wonder if I can so that seems like an awful lot of Bowden tube for this printer I wonder if I can get away with snipping that in half. Let's see what the book of knowledge says. Did I throw it? What did I do with the book of knowledge? There it is. Let's see if it mentions the Bowden tube. Because that does look like too much. It does not mention the Bowden tube at all. Interesting. Hmm. No mention whatsoever of the Bowden tube, and it doesn't even show the Bowden tube on the printer on their main picture. So, I want to cut in half. just because I think I can get away with it. Not the best scissors to use for that. Actually, it probably is best to use this. I think it's plenty. Nice. And that would clear just fine. That's up here, especially if I get it nice and molded to go this way. Yeah, that'll clear that. Oh, yeah. I think that's good. Oh. 
Yep. So I would suggest I will update the video if that turns out to have been a bad idea, but I'd suggest cutting that in half and now you have a spare boat and tube. Because that seemed like way, way too much boat and tube. Didn't need that much. Okay. Speed holder. This just screws right in. Let's put some, uh, that's probably not the greatest starter filament. Yeah, let's put some cheap white. This is some of that $12 filament that I got. Why not? does tip. Okay. I am going to reverse that since it wants to tip over. And there's plenty of excess cordage on this printer. So why not? Unlike the CR10 where you need to have this box really close, this one has plenty of excess wire. So I don't actually have to pivot the arm away from the printer, I can actually pivot it toward the printer for better stability. Okay. Which means we can pivot it this way. I'm also going to make the threads a little less to make the arm a little longer. further away, it fits better, it should squeeze and pop through, see how easy it is to feed it, there it goes, filament is fed, now that looks like a built in hold down for wire management, which is also a nice little improvement all metal extruder top end and it comes with a little this is a cheap little thing you could buy these anywhere um, it's just a little wire hold down thing but if you pop the screw out of there it will fit over top of this and now you have a way of securing this which is actually really nice while I enjoy printing parts for my printer, why print parts if you don't need to? Now, slide this all the way over here. Make sure 
this still has a nice little bit of play there and then tighten it down although this will slide through here no problem see that's it now your wire is captive and won't get messy on you I like that double check the book of knowledge okay T bars are set gantry is installed plate is adjusted so that it doesn't tear itself apart when it slides bottom nuts installed limit switches connected extruders connected steppers connected heater cartridge and thermistor installed using grunge together screws because they were missing two spool holder installed bed connected Bowden tube installed hot end fan cover assembly installed blower motor installed hot bed connected wire management set so that they don't pull each other apart that's it it even comes with a basic troubleshooting guide on the back I don't know how effective it is I'll read that later but that's actually nice that they would actually include that I, I'm impressed okay now the question is do I want to install this on this bed because it says 3M, which means it'll probably be hard to remove. Screw it. Let's install it. I can always force it off if I need to. Now, the way I like to do these, don't worry about touching it. You're not going to hurt it. I like to, well, first of all, put it down upside down. And it is the correct size, and it is reasonably straight. Okay. Then we come from the top side. I lined up at the front edge. I lined up left and right. You see, I'm holding it like this. Okay, that's so only a tiny portion of it touches the bed, so it doesn't stick down and grab before you're ready. Okay, that should be it. Let's see if that will line up. Yes, it does. The way I like to do this is just do it from one end and push down. That's it. No bubbles. That easy. Boy, that wiggled around. This is this is going back to the Wanhao days. This is going to need spring cups to keep those springs straight. But like Wanhao, it should work just fine. Okay, that's it. Everything appears to be moving correctly. I think that might be a hair too tight. So I'm going to loosen it up a little bit. Okay. There we go. Too tight is almost as bad as too loose. It moves apparently fine. Now, because this has dual lead screws, you will need to level your gantry and I will show you that in the next video when we get to that when I actually try to set this up and print okay the dampers look like they are installed correctly that one looks like a loose screw it is not it is tight okay. you should go around and check every screw on the printer and just attempt to snug them a little bit see if they need any snugging Things do come loose in shipment. I noticed no loose screws on this. Everything seemed tight, but you know, it's good practice to check anyway. I do like the screwdriver. That is nice and snug. Nice and snug. Those are snug. Oh, I did not check those. There are also screws here at the top. Those are snug. There we go. That's it. The a E10 is built. It is actually not a bad looking printer. I mean, this, the green's goofy. I'll probably pull them off later, but for now I'll leave them on. But by and large, oh whoa, that's got a pretty decent amount of play. I'm gonna have to see if I can tighten that. Although, I guess it really won't move anywhere unless something nails it. Wow, that seems like it has a lot of play. I wonder if that is adjustable. 
is it? I do not know if that even is adjustable. It might not be. No, I don't think it is. I think that is made to sit on there like that. Okay. I would be worried about how loose that is, but there is no adjustment and nothing is mentioned, so I am going to go with it and see what happens. That belt seems a little loose to me, but again, it doesn't seem to want to skip. I don't see any... It doesn't give me any tendency to want to skip, so I think it's okay. That's it. I will record another video on first boot up and bed leveling. Okay, it homed and I tightened all four leveling screws all the way down. I raised the axis up to right around 100 millimeters. I got an iCrap 5C here. And the belt runs underneath here. So you got to put it in over here and then slide it over. Okay, so make sure you have the right height here and slide it over here, make sure the height's the same. Doesn't matter what the height is, as long as it's the same on both ends. That's how you level your gantry. Um, make sure you disable your steppers, and if you need to, you can literally just grab this little nut right here, the, um, uh, what do you call this thing? Is it the lead screw damper? I don't know, whatever that is. <laughs> um, the anti-wobble damper, the the axe screw damper here. And you can literally grab this and turn it as you need to, up and down, until you get this the same height all the way across. So the two sides are the same height. Once you have the two sides the same height, your x-axis is leveled, then you go back into your control box. I've already heated it up. The bed heats up very quickly. The nozzle does not. In fact, I set the nozzle at 220, turned the parts cooling fan off, and it still hasn't reached, it just reached 220. So it took 10 minutes to get to 220. Oh, well, six or seven minutes. Um, I su so where was I? Ran out of memory. <laughs> Care beeped at me once up his SD card full. Wow, I guess that video was actually a pretty big video. Well, anyway, um, I believe I was talking about the temperature of the hot end. It took a while to get up the temperature, and I suspect that's because the hot end is naked, so the fan is blowing right over top of the hot end, so the heater cartridge has to fight its own cooling. So I'm going to have to look into protecting that, putting something in there to stop the air from blowing directly on top of the hot end. But bed is threaded all the way down, X gantry is leveled, you go into control, position, auto home, X goes, Y goes, Z comes down, and then we will see what's on the SD card after we do a basic leveling. I figure I'll leave you guys in the loop while I do this. Turn this this way, make it easier for you guys to see what's going on. Okay. Now we go into control. Disable steppers. far off are we? Oh, way off. Okay, so it's not even close. You need to be careful when you do this to not push this up or down because this is your bed leveling. So you can see I manhandle it. I'm not too careful with it. Although I probably should be careful with that connection for that stepper motor in the back there. But the, it is off by more than the thickness of this. I gotta really raise this up. You notice I'm doing both at the same time? That's so I keep it relatively level. the filament. No, pretty close. Pretty close. Need to come up a little bit. Pretty close. Now, I will pull this 
all the way forward. Gently. And there should be a similar gap on the back side. Eep. So now I just raise up the back side equally, both ends, until I get it there. here, open it until there's a gap, there's the gap, bring it back, go over to this side, bring it up until the gap just disappears. Okay, bring the bed back, verify it again, yep, Tweak this one again. Because when you adjust one, you are changing the others. So you will have to go through it a couple of times to get it. As you can see, I'm not being all that careful either. You don't have to be gentle with it. There we go. That is pretty close. Close enough for us to begin a print. So we're going to go to initialize SD card, print from SD, no sample, test file G code, here we go. Pen holder, pyramid, chess piece, character, box, big white. Um, I have no idea. Chest piece should be pretty small. Let's try that. Can I adjust the speed? Oh, yes. I can adjust the speed just by turning. So I'm going to turn my speed down to 40%. Let it finish doing its heating thing. Oh, adjust the speed down to 40% again. Looks like it resets once it loads. Now this thing's pretty rigid, so as long as you're careful, you can get away with manhandling this while it's running. This side needs to come up a little bit. I think the whole thing needs to come up a little bit. There we go. A little more. Bring that up. Bring that up. Bring this up a little bit. Bring this up a little bit. Bring that up. Bring that up. Bring that up. See what I'm doing? I just tell it to print something. And I live adjust it until I get something I like. And I am liking what I'm seeing. I think I'm a little too much squished there. Alright. Let's crank up the speed and see how it goes. Looking good. Now something that does help, well first of all, be gentle, don't just chuck the printer around. But, do I have one handy? No I don't. A flashlight's handy, shine the flashlight underneath there so you can see what it's doing. But it is printing. As you can see, that's all there really is to bed level, it's not difficult. It's just, you've got to actually react to what it's doing and know which way to push it. I think I'm actually a hair too low. Teeny tiny bit too much squish. But I'm going to leave it for now. Nah, that is too much. 
So let's raise it up just a hair. All four. Watch your fingers on these back ones that you don't get in the way. Oh wow, looks like I actually screwed it up by doing that. Interesting. I'm going to let it go anyway. It's only on the first layer. It will adapt. But it looks like I actually jammed the, um, caused the stepper to skip. The spool holder is a little too small. Yeah, it works fine. I caused the stepper to skip, but it made up for it. It's only the first layer. When I was reaching for those back screws, I shifted the, um, I caused the Y to skip. But that's okay. Because it was only on the first layer, it adapted. I just printed over top of it. Yeah, it'll be fine. Alright, I'm going to let this run. Actually, I'm going to turn it up a little bit. Let's do 120%. And I will be back after it's done. One thing I noticed. I'm wondering how they did I wonder if it's weaker. I mean, that's why it skips so easily. But the fans are like little turbines. This thing needs a complete fan overhaul like I do all my printers. But... This thing is silent. I can barely hear the steppers going at all. But the other printers are definitely louder than this. So if I replace these fans with silent fans, this thing's going to be pretty damn quiet. This might be a nice farm printer if it stays, if it's reliable and prints nicely. So this will definitely be interesting to keep an eye on this thing. I was not expecting it to be so quiet. I'm not even sure if you can hear how quiet it is. Very, very quiet printer. I wanted to give you guys a close-up of this thing going. You see, I got it going pretty fast. Whatever the stock G-code is, I have it going at 114%. And it's printing flawlessly so far. And you can hear how quiet it is. You just hear an electronic hum from the steppers. Very, very silent. Spool holder kind of sucks. I'm going to have to make a new one of those. So I hope this thing's not solid all the way across. That'd be an awful waste of filament. It's only a 7% some chest piece, probably a pawn. But yeah, I'll come back later as it's got more done. Alrighty. Well, I got the first print. And it's garbage. <laughs> I mean, it's like totally screwed. Look at that. I thought, okay, maybe the G-code on the SD card was bad, so I printed a Marvin. And my little Marvin's in trouble. It's all skewed forward. I was like, what the hell? Remember when I had that little Y-axis slip when I started printing this? Well, turns out the little gear drive this little critter right here put on the Y motor it wasn't tight the set screw was completely loose so every now and then it would grab and not grab and the Y bed the bed would slip and I was like oh thank god that was nice because then I reprinted the Marvin and the Marvin came out about as perfect as it's possible to come out I mean it's, it's as good as any other printer Nowadays, there's not that much quality in printers. They're all very good. If they're working properly, they're printing very, very well. This is about as clean a Marvin as you can expect. And this is not even tuned. I just grabbed the 
G code file for my Mega Select Wide Hell Duplicator i3 and tossed it on here. It's not optimized or anything. So, of course, I reprinted the chess piece and it came out fine. I mean, the sides are a little less clean than I would like, but I have a feeling that's optimization where the, the G code just isn't perfectly clean because I printed my simple vase and it came out perfect. Um, I did turn down acceleration from 1000 to 500 and jerk from 20 to 10. I did that on all my printers. Whatever the acceleration and jerk is, I cut it in half. And now it doesn't jiggle the table anymore when it's moving around. But this is also airtight, so this will hold water. And it printed nicely. I haven't had this going at 200%, so probably 40, 45 millimeters a second, maybe something like that. And it printed by this vase mode, you know, a whole bunch of bottom layers of vase mode. And now, I finally looked up what the G code files were. And one's called Pyramid, and it actually looks pretty cool. It's a stepped pyramid like you'd see in um, Mexico. So I'm going to print one of those. It's probably going to take quite a while. Um, it's not even done the first layer yet, and it's still at 0%, so it'll, it'll be a while. But I don't need this to do anything else anymore, so I figured I want to print something nicer with some detail in it. And we shall see how it comes out. But first layer is coming out nice, zero issues. Um, this bread surface is junk, as I expected. Um, this thing shredded right into it. You can see a piece missing out of here. And if you can see it, it's a piece missing out of here, too. So it, it dug right in and just shredded the surface. So I gotta get a piece of glass and some printing Z for this, and it'll be fine. But once I replace the fans in this thing, I I think I'm really gonna enjoy this printer if um if the quality is there. And it looks like it probably is because it could do 300 millimeters tall, which means I could do a nice size nose cone on this, and it's quiet. I'm not kidding when I say this thing is quiet. I can barely hear the stepper motors going. All the noise you hear is fans, and primarily two of them. I suspect that once I replace these fans, that this could be a, a nightstand printer. That you could put this on a nightstand next to you and go to sleep. <laughs> it's that quiet. If I could figure out how to make my other printers this quiet, that would be mind-blowing. I want to see, just for the heck of it, if I can get these little things off. I don't know if they go all the way underneath. Or if they'll pop right out. Ah, yeah, they'll pop right out. So, I'm just not a big fan of the colors things in here. I don't want or need them. Yep, they pop right out. I kind of figured they would. Yeah, they're just little tabs that pop out. So, my preliminary non optimized feedback on this printer is I am impressed it's doing a very nice job it is crazy quiet the results without even optimizing simplify 3d for this printer yet are quite good I haven't done any um, validating of my steps to see if my calibration is correct I'll be impressed we'll see how long the X gantry stays level. We'll see how long the bed stays level. I have done one, two, three, four, five, and now six prints, and the bed has stayed level. So I suspect it's relatively stable, as long as I'm careful with this Y carriage. I don't anticipate a problem. Um, one thing I do like about this weird box is that it's a little wider, so modifications should be pretty easy. There should be plenty of room in here. So I will replace the fans and also replace the SD card reader with a full-size SD card reader. What I do to all my printers. They all get quiet fans and they all get full-size SD card readers. Um, it says it's good to... Oh, and I haven't had any problems with the, the print head anymore. It seems to heat up fine now. Maybe that was just an initial thing. Um, I haven't run any really good filament through it yet. This is just cheap filament and it's handling it like a charm. So once it's done this pyramid in the morning, I'll put some eSun PLA Pro in here and see how it handles that. Which I don't anticipate it being a problem. Um, that, that PLA works wonderful and everything. 
but I am pleased. So, when you get it, make sure you snug up the belt. Um, I actually ended up loosening a little bit, thinking it was too tight. Um, make sure you check the, the, I don't know what this is called, the, um, the little gear unit that attaches to the, the I guess the, it's the belt drive gear that attaches to the stepper motor. Uh, my y-axis was loose so if you get really nasty layer shifting like that or like that that's what it is it does not it's not the stepper um, skipping it is literally the the gear spinning on the shaft so you won't hear anything from the printer it'll just the layers will be wrong easy fix once I found that it was seconds to fix it uh, loosen them both put the one on the flat tighten it down, tighten the other one, fine, no problems. Um, once I'm done this print, I'll check the rest of them, but so far everything else seems to be fine. I am very, very pleased. The, this is, for a cheap $300 printer, it is impressive. If the quality is tantamount to a Maker Select, one how, um, or even half that of a CR10, I believe this is worth it, literally just for how quiet it is. You get a 220 by 270 by 300 millimeter print volume with virtually no noise. The only noise I'm hearing is the fans. You really have to listen hard to hear the steppers. Even when you tell it to go fast, the steppers are just very silent. I don't know if it's if they're undervolting them or I don't know what they're doing. Uh, they they look like normal steppers. I think they're although they are smaller. I think these are smaller than NEMA 17s. I am not certain they don't get warm you know I don't feel any heat it's just crazy quiet here it is doing diagonal runs which is the noisiest because you got both X and Y steppers moving together plus the extruder stepper and even that if you listen you can just hear the stepper going it's it's quiet I might actually end up sticking this up in my bedroom just because I'll be able to tolerate it um, so I can have more space because I want to put the, the second CR 10 there so I need space to put this but um, as of right now I am impressed I would I would definitely say that this printer is worth looking at um, some changes I plan to make I'm going to rotate the z-axis steppers 90 degrees so that the plugs are facing straight back on top of the um of the extrusion the aluminum extrusion this way they will never be at risk of being whacked um you can't really add larger thumb screws because you'll bump into the steppers not even counting the switches you'll bump into the steppers uh and i don't think there's any way around that but the ones that are on here are very good and it does appear to hold the bed level fine so that might not be an issue um, I haven't tried to print anything particularly large yet this is the largest thing I've printed so tomorrow I will throw something on here that's big I'll put a 300 millimeter um, spiral vase on here um, see how it comes out I don't anticipate it coming out as a problem this layer looks nice and smooth and this is ultra cheap filament so if it prints this smoothly with cheap stuff, I think it'll print just fine with anything. Uh, the big question will be longevity. How long will it hold up? I guess that depends on how these wear, the wheels. But it's weird. I want to tighten this up, even though I don't know how to, because it feels loose, but it doesn't appear to be affecting the print quality. And not being crazy tight will probably extend its lifespan. It won't be grinding away inside those grooves. Um, I say if you want a spare printer to play around with and you don't want to spend the money on a larger, on a second or a third CR10, but you'd like a little more print volume than you're going to get from a Maker Select or a one hal Duplicator i3, which is what I would compare this to, this is the same price as a one hal Duplicator i3 or a Monoprice Maker Select. It's, it's just under 300 bucks and it's got a significantly larger print volume. The Maker Select One Hauser are 220 by 220 or is it 200 by 200? I mean, it might be 200 by 200. Yeah, 200 by 200 by 180. 
while this is 220 by 270 by 300. So you not only get the altitude, the Z height to print taller things, but you also get one dimension of larger XY on the Y axis, so you can experiment with printing larger stuff like that. In fact, you could probably even print a, a shoe or an insole on this if you have smaller feet. My feet are a little too big. I would need 290 millimeters. <coughs> but uh, a lot of people are 270 millimeters. Diagonally, you could probably get 280. But um, yeah, I'm impressed. We shall see. I mean, the, so far, no Z wobble. It is clean all the way up. I see no perturbations. I see no artifacting that isn't already there in the G code. It looks like a it looks like a print I yanked off the duplicator i3 or the Maker Select. Um, I don't think it's quite as clean as the CR10. I mean, just looking at the parts, it's not quite as clean. But the CR10 is exceptional, so it's it's probably not really fair to compare a three hundred dollar printer with a five hundred plus dollar printer. Um, but comparing it to other $300 printers, I would give it a buy. I will make more videos regarding this printer and I will also update you guys in six months, you know, probably three months and six months besides my normal videos, um, with status reports on how the printer is holding up. I print a lot of stuff, so it will get a lot of use. <laughs> um, it's printing nice enough that I will probably have it running every day. And we shall see how it comes out. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I know this is very long. I believe I am pushing an hour and 50 minutes. Or hour and 45, hour and 50 minutes, something like that. But um, let me give you guys a little orbit of the printer. And what I've discovered so far. Um, so, once again, i got to look at the phone to see what the camera sees. Um, you can see you got the double wide extrusion and the single wide extrusion. Okay. The only 3D printed parts are the linear rail blocks here, front and back, and the linear rail blocks here. I was cleaning up today. <laughs> um, let's see, mostly packaging from stuff that came in while I was at Naram. Um, let's see. I don't like this. I do not like how that plug is exposed. So I'm going to rotate these stepper motors so the plug sits on top of the rail back here. It'll still be invisible, but it'll also be protected. It won't be able to get knocked by this if it gets bent or pushed. Um, this is nice. It's all metal. This is all metal. They got retention for this, which is nice. Um, the whole build head is nice and clean. They did a better optimized parts cooler, which should help. Uh, this is all metal. Brass plus the lead screws. I see no issues, no problems. Everything looks clean to me. Let's pick it up while it's printing, just to show you that you can. Here's your underside. actually a light on the heat bed when it's running so that was interesting but um yeah um, I'm impressed this is a nice printer for the price um, I would put it up there with the one how duplicator i3 and the maker select assuming it proves to be as long-lived as those printers I mean I mean that thing over there has been running for over two years <laughs> um, and it still prints perfectly so we'll see I will update you guys in the future. I hope you enjoyed.